Hello there and welcome to another one of our Python programming videos. Uh, it's been quite a while since I posted the last video. I've been extremely busy getting ready for our new specification and uh, preparing all that stuff, but I'm sure there'll be new videos on the horizon very soon. In this video, we're going to look at building a multiple uh, Tikinta window. Uh, and in that, we're going to look at doing it the basic way and the way that it does work and also doing it the more advanced way using classes. So. Here you can see I've got some uh, container code to start me off and this is all stuff that you should be quite familiar with before. So we've got our import statement for Tikinta as TK, we've got a from Tikinta import TKK for TTK for all of our widgets and also we've got from Tikinta import message box. You can see I've got three subroutines up there which are all just printing out temp at the moment. I'm going to put in my code in between all of those and these will all be called as and when I press these three buttons down here. So for my first window, the root window, I've got three buttons. So you can see there I've got button assigned a TKK, a TTK button. Window, uh, that will be glued to the main window, which I've created at the top, because it says window.tk.tk, capital T there. Uh, and that creates the first window, and it's gonna be a 500 by 300 window, and it's gonna have a title that says multiple to kinter windows. Now in each one of these buttons, the text will be open the main window, close the main window, and I create a yes and no window. So you're gonna see a little bit of a, an advanced, more advanced anyway, um, button. That comes with a Tikinta package. All of them have commands on them, so it calls the create window command, which jumps to this one on line 11. The close window jumps to line 14, and an ask yes no jumps to line 7. Obviously I need my window dot main loop to make it run, and you can see as I run this here you can see i've got three buttons and notice that underneath each one of them i've got a button dot pack so i'm just using the pack uh, geometry manager and i'm expanding it so that means it'll just pad itself out detect all the other widgets and expand itself out nice and equally and you can see they're all equally balanced there and if i click it you can see in my um, terminal it just prints out temp because it does doesn't it if i click it, it calls the command we're all good so now we need to make the first button work, which is open main window. So let's have a look at how we're going to do this. So here's our create window button here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new property and I'm going to call it extra window. All right, that's, that's what the new window is going to be called. In my main one, I've called it window down here. You can see window down there. I'm going to create one up here called extra window. Now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say if you want multiple forms, you've got to use tk.toplevel. And now look at the capitalization of that, tk.toplevel. So top level is a class that we're going to use, um, and that will create a, a little window for us um, above that. And we can add extra properties to this as well. So every time I want to reference that now the property now, so extra window now absorbs or inherits all the properties from the top level class, extra window.title. And then I can put a title in there, such as uh, uh, d d extra window. So that will be the title of the form. I can then specify things like the geometry. So geometry, so size of the window, just like we've done further down. I've got a 500 by 300 further down. So I might go with a, a smaller window just so you can see it overlaid on top as well. So let's go for something like a, a 300 by 400 window. After that. Then I'm going to start adding some widgets. So TTK will get me the widget packages there, and it already suggests a button for me. Now I'm going to go with a label first. So I'm going to do label, and I'm going to have some brackets. Now, what is it expecting in here? The first thing is what are you, or what is this widget associated to? So it's associated to my extra window. That's what I want it to stick to. I don't want it to go to the main window. I want it to go to my new window, my little extra window. So I'll do that. Then I'm going to have a bit of text inside there, so text equals, and then you can put whatever you like inside some brackets in there, and I'll say something like, um, let's go for, uh, what's just having, oh, just, I'm running out of ideas, John's, I need an apostrophe, there you go, that'll override the apostrophe, that slash is just so I can do an apostrophe in a string, by the way, so John's wonderful program. 
Okay, that's the text for that. Um, and obviously, that will create the widget, but what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm just going to pack it. I'm just going to pack it in. It doesn't matter where it sits. This, this isn't about the layout, by the way. This is about just the functionality. So um, I'll, I'll do a button, though. So a button. Let's do extra window. Assign it to there. Comma. What text do you want inside it? And this is just going to say speech marks. Click me. Okay. Click me. Now I could put a command in there, but at the moment I'm not really bothered. Uh, and obviously I'm going to pack that in. Now while we're doing this, an important thing to do here is just check what you're doing. So let's just run this for a second and check that it does everything we need to do. I click on it and this pops up. It says John's wonderful program, click me. Now obviously the button doesn't do anything because I've not given it a command. But yeah, okay, yeah fine. It does what it's supposed to do I suppose. Just close that down. Okay. Now, all I'm going to do next is I'm going to think about what actually is going on here. I've got my extra windows, I've got my geometry, I've got my title. That is in its own function that gets called as and when. But this really isn't the greatest of practices. Okay? So... Before we get on to making this more advanced, let's just do the other two subroutines. So let's do the close window, for example. So if we want to close a window down or destroy the window, that's the key word there, destroy, I'm going to need to call the window that I want to destroy. And that window is going to be extra window. Now, why is it not popped up? What is going on here? Extra window. Now it's looking at me like it's not accessed, it doesn't know what extra window is. Now there's a reason for this people, extra window isn't actually visible. Extra window is only visible inside the scope of create window and that subroutine. So if I wanted to actually get access to the uh, extra window, I'm going to have to create a global variable. So global extra window and you'll see now what will start to happen is this extra window bit down here will start to enact itself. Okay? So you can see there now, uh, let's put some information in. So I've got extra window in there, and I'll put extra window dot destroy, bracket, bracket, and now I've used it. So let's have a look what happens there. Run my program, open the main window, close the main window, window disappears. Okay, wonderful. And that's it, simple as that. Now sometimes, if you run this for the first time, I'm pretty sure because this extra window hasn't been instantiated or built or developed yet, if you click close window, keep your eye on my terminal down here because when I click it, you'll notice that it says, oh wait a minute, that extra window is not defined. Now it's not throwing me out or anything like that, but we probably need to handle that. And the best way to handle stuff like that is probably using a try catch block. So I'll write try here, or try accept. Try accept print nothing to destroy. Now what will happen this time is a try accept block is really good because it will try the code in this first step and then if it fails and can't execute that code it will then print nothing to destroy rather than displaying erroneous error messages or kicking the user out to their screen for example. So let me just get rid of this for a second. Here's my new window. I click close main window and this time it says nothing to destroy and you can keep doing that until you create the main window, up it, up it pops, it closes down, no problem, happy days. Okay, so that's our close window. Now another one I wanted to show you was the ask yes or no. Now this is a, a button that's quite nifty in, in uh, Tikinta, and we can use a variable because these kind of message boxes are used to gather information from the user. So message box, and you, there's loads of different ones by the way. So you've got ask okay, cancel, question, retry, cancel, yes, no, yes, no, cancel. Some of them have slightly different syntax. 
So what I'll do is I'll put in there, ask question, and let's just put in, that's the title of the window. And in there, I'll just put some body text. All right. Wonderful. Now, what, whatever you want to do after that with the answer variable, I'll show you what, what is going to get put inside answer when we print it out. There we are. Got a bit funny there with my indentation. Um, okay, so let's just run this now and see what happens here. Um, let's try create yes, no window. So title of the window is in there. Body text is in there. It says yes or no. I click yes. Keep your eye on my terminal. It says yes. Disappears. I click no. It comes out as no. All lowercase. You can handle that in an if statement and do whatever you like with it. There are more of these, by the way. So I'll just show you quickly um, another one. Now, if it doesn't return something, then all you really need to do is a message box. You've got a couple there that I was going to use. I forgot. Message box dot show error. If I put show in, you can see there, show info, show warning. So let's say we had an error. We can put in there again. Info title. Give the user a warning. Run this program again. And you can see now, give the user a warning. So, you know, you might want to use those in a project in the future. So, okay. Nice little nifty system. It's working fine, no problem. Now let's think about what we can do for a more advanced step. So join me in part two, where we're going to turn this basic code that we've got and going to use, start using some object-oriented programming to help us out.